Okay, I'm recording very quietly. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're recording quietly because it's very, very early. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> it's like you're part of the team, you know? That's why. Okay. Because, like, if I can't scream and talk loudly, you can't scream and talk loudly. Okay. So, um... We're recording this very important and urgent podcast. You didn't tell me what the topic was, you just said it was a surprise. There's a reason, and it will become clear in just a moment. Is Aegon going to appear again? <laughs> no, but he did come to my Dishonored stream yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Apparently yeah. he hasn't played Dishonored. Well, maybe three of us can talk about it, and it will be the opposite of us. Yeah, yeah, only I know things. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so... <sighs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna send you a screenshot that will explain everything. <laughs> You're gonna be hyped and psyched about this subject together in one. Are you ready? Alright. Because I didn't tell you what the topic is, but I said no, we no. should record soon. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. Okay, here goes. Mm. <laughs> Yay! Mm. <laughs> All right, Richie. All right. I sent okay. you the screenshot explaining what the yep. topic is and why. Yep. Do the intro. <laughs> Thanks to our generous Patreon backers. <laughs> we are now contractually obligated to record a podcast about the beloved NPC from Dark Souls 3, Yoshka. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you brought this on yourselves. Richie. <laughs> yes, Sinclair. Who or what is Yoshka? <laughs> well, Yoshka is a useless <laughs> wife who sits in a tower doing nothing, but is apparently also the captain of the Dark Moon Knights. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> how did she become the captain of the Dark Moon Knights? Uh, by default, because everyone else is dead. <laughs> and what is she doing in the tower? That's a very good question. I think uh, Loki made this a little bit more clear. I think we pro we have, like... I thought we were going to hit this Patreon tier, like, much later than we actually did. Because Lance has found a few things about Yoshka, but... Uh, not enough to go off, but we have talked to Loki in the interim about like the way that Pontiff Sullivan and Aldridge's story is um, slightly different in the Japanese one, and it's down to one, basically just one word being translated differently. Can you tell so, us more? Yeah. Okay. I think. Oh, are we just going to talk at normal volume now? Or I don't know. Am I talking normal volume? Okay. I can't. I tell. think we're going to yeah. we're going to get gradually louder, yeah. and then at the end we'll yeah. just be screaming like normal. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the assumption that the people who played the English version had been going off with regard to the Sullivan Aldrich Gwendolyn situation was that Sullivan had locked Gwendolyn up in the cathedral for Aldrich to eat because it's written that like um. I don't know the exact wording, but it's something like uh, the god of the dark moon was locked in the cathedral to be fed to the devourer, meaning Aldrich. But Loki was looking at the Japanese and he's like, no, the it's um, the cause and effect relationship isn't quite there. It's more like he locked Gwendolyn in the cathedral mm -hmm. and then like not connected to Sullivan's actions. Gwendolyn was eaten by the devourer. So- the way that Loki explained Sullivan's situation is that Sullivan's role is he locks Gwendolyn in 
the cathedral. And then he says, oh yeah, Gwendolyn's sick. So I'm going to speak on Gwendolyn's behalf. So everyone do what I tell them to because I'm Gwendolyn's representative. And that actually kind of makes a bit more sense of the way that they they give him the title pontiff. Because the idea of the, the Pope is that the Pope is God's representative. Mm-hmm. So Sullivan is, is Gwendolyn's representative. So it kind of makes more sense for him to be called pontiff in this situation. Because his... um. I can't remember what what Loki said, but his his Japanese title is like it's similar to to pontiff. It's like um someone who speaks for God. Mm-hmm. So the idea of Sullivan's authority came from basically saying I everything I say to you comes directly from Gwendolyn, so you have to do what I tell you. And of course, he wasn't actually listening to Gwendolyn; he was just giving his own orders. Yeah. So what happens is, when Aldrich shows up, Aldrich takes over and kills Gwendolyn. So then Sullivan is like. Sullivan's, um, I guess, like the basis of Sullivan's power begins to erode because he doesn't have Gwendolyn anymore. So I think, based on that, what's going on with Yoshka is that she says that like Sullivan imprisoned her in the tower or something. Does she actually say who imprisoned her? Uh, I think I'm, so. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, good idea. Yoshka dialogue. Yoshka dialogue. Oh, what a great character. <laughs> the problem is, like, there is something that says she was imprisoned, but I don't know if that ended up in the final game or not. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, he says, um, uh, the, the Sullivan wrongfully proclaimed himself pontiff and took me prisoner. Right. Okay. So I think the idea is that she is... If if you buy that she's related to Gwendolyn, which I think we can- Okay, this we're going to have to go back again to confusing shit from <laughs> before the Ring City kind of- The Ring City simultaneously made it more confusing, but also explained stuff. <laughs> we had assumed prior to the Ring City that Gwyn only had three kids. Right. Then Ring City introduced Filianor, which opened the possibility that, okay, he had more than three. And we just hadn't heard about them before. So when- Yoshka talks about herself as though she's the literal, like, familial brother to- as if she's the, like, the familial sister of Gwendolyn. Mm-hmm. Um, we were thinking, does she mean just, like, she calls him brother because they're very close and he would look after her, or does she think- like, or are they actually meant to be related? So I think now it's fair to say that they are supposed to actually be related. Mm-hmm. So I think the idea is that in the same way that Sullivan locked- Gwendolyn in the cathedral and said, okay, Gwendolyn's here. I speak on behalf of Gwendolyn. He also locked up Yoshka mm-hmm. because Yoshka, Yoshka is of the same family. So if Gwendolyn were gone, Yoshka would be the next kind of in line to give orders. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So I think the idea is that he locks her up for the same reason he locks up Gwendolyn, which is so like she can't interfere, but also because of where she's locked up, which is in this, this tower that you can only get to through an invisible, like, walkway that's kind of like no one would think to go there Mm -hmm. because she's locked up there that means that when aldrich showed up and ate gwendolyn he didn't get yorshka so i think the idea is that when sullivan if sullivan manages to get rid of aldrich then he will be able to say okay gwendolyn's dead it was aldrich killed him but it's okay we've got yorshka and then he'll just lock yorshka up and say now i speak on behalf of yorshka and everybody's like but she's so useless no yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then his plan fails. So I think that's what they're getting at. So do you think an alternate ending to Dark Souls 3 is like, Gwendolyn is dead, and then Pontiff is like, oh, I speak for Yorshka now, and everybody's like, uh, she can't tell a difference between like a crow and a dragon. We're not going to listen to you now. Yeah, but I mean, look at the people who are in like power in real life. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, yeah. so she has uh, quite um, quite a few dialogue lines, and I mm. want to <laughs> ask you about them. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, so her first lot is she says, like, uh, name thyself, stranger, and she talks about, you've journeyed far to hear my voice, and then she, she gives this little speech about, you'll become a shadow of Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere, a blade that will hunt the foes of our lords. Mm-hmm. That is word for word what Gwendolyn says in Dark Souls, if you join the Blades of the Dark Moon. 
Interesting. So because she's because she's captain of the dark moon, she has <laughs> she's just repeating the same thing. Oh my god, Richie, I just had this idea yeah. where Yorshik is actually not like related to the royal family or anything. She was just someone who was appointed yeah. captain. And then Gwendolyn is like, Okay, well what I say, how I do my speech is I usually say, yeah. Oh, you know, I mentioned my father and then my sister, so maybe you can mention your relatives. But Yorshka doesn't get it, so just keeps she keeps saying <laughs> the speech word boy for it, being like my father, Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> Gwendol is like, no, 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 no. My father, you have a different family. <laughs> well, Yoshka does have amnesia, we think. You think? Well, okay. The way Yoshka's Yoshka doesn't seem to know anything outside of the little tower that she lives in. Right. Yeah. Like she doesn't know the difference between like someone walking on an invisible platform and a bird. <laughs> yeah. And on there's a, a the Building she's in is called the Church of Yoshka. Mm-hmm. And inside there there's there's the Yoshka Spear. And the the Yoshka Spear, if you read it, it says like Yoshka um was given like her name by Gwendolyn. Mm-hmm. So I think it's more that she's called Yoshka because she's in Yoshka Church. It's like I don't know which oh, came first. Right. He says, like, hang on, I'll look it up. It's like Spear of Yoshka. Yeah, Yoshka's Spear. Yeah, it says this is a treasure gifted to the Yoshka Church. So, like, that spear was given to the Church of Yoshka. And then, uh, hang on, Yoshka's. She, I think you, you can get a talisman. Yeah, chime, hang on. Um,. Yeah, um, her brother, a former knight captain, meaning Gwendolyn, mm-hmm. presented her with this medium together with another gift, her name. Oh, so they could have named her after a church. I Yeah, I. it's weird because we don't know what came first. We don't know if, like, Yoshka was always in the church and it was a church to Yoshka and she didn't know because she was in the tower. But then she was told, but then she says, like, Sullivan imprisoned her in the tower. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know what the exact situation is, but like, you know, when we were talking about Erden and how like Erden Chapel is more like a, it's like a Japanese shrine more than it is like a church. Yeah. And you have on the top, there's the symbol of Erden that would have been like the way that those shrines have like a symbol of the, of the kami in the shrine. Yeah. I think the Yoshka spear is that it's like the Holy spear of that church. <gasps> mm, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so I but like I don't know again, it's not clear which came first. But I, I do think like she may have been named after the Church of Yoshka. Yeah. Rather than mm-hmm. Yeah. And Because and also the name itself is weird because you have like uh Nameless King doesn't have a name, but then you've got like Gwyn Guinevere Gwendolyn Filianor and then Yoshka. And it, it just doesn't sound like it fits with that naming style. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, like, yeah, she may have been named after the church. Wouldn't it have been great if Yoshka was the nameless king? <laughs> How does that work? No, because it could be like, well, there was a war god, and then he his name was stricken from history. And it turns out that- It's Yoshka. <laughs> that's, but it's Yoshka, and that's why she doesn't remember her name. And the war god was actually, was actually this, like, little petite dragon girl. You know what? That would have been awesome. It would have been very, yeah. uh, like, ah, oh, that anime that I've never seen, but I see referenced a lot, uh, where there are girls and there are dragons, and one is, like, really cute and small, and she's, like... Dragon half? I don't know. But it was just, like, really cute and small, and she's so cute. Yeah. 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 But is Yoshka cute, though, or do we find Yoshka irritating? What if we... Okay. Um, what if we take a picture of Yorshka, put her in MS mm-hmm. Paint, and then just, like, uh, I, I don't know, like, make her, you know, like, put the, pull the top part down so she's, like, very tiny and chubby? Oh, make, like, a tiny Yorshka. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like, resize her, but only with, uh, 
like only horizontally. Only vertically. Yeah. 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 That, okay. no, yeah exactly. We'll, we'll keep we'll keep talking about her, and then um, <laughs> I might do that while we're talking. <laughs> Um, and also something really interesting is that I think where the church of Yorshka is or somewhere in that area, there's, there's what seems to be a painting. Well, the church of Yorshka doesn't fit very well with the rest of the architecture of Irithel. It looks like a much older building. And outside of it, you see a Corvian praying at a tombstone. Mm-hmm. And like back before we, before we had DLC and everything, we were thinking like, is it supposed to be that this church is like part of the painted world? Because mm-hmm. it, it's of a similar look to those, and like, the Corvian is sort of praying because he's from the painted world. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? Isn't there a part, or maybe I don't? Because there's a couple of places that look similar. And I can't tell them apart. And one of them seems to have like a, a frame, not an actual painting, but a frame. Yeah, there's a lot of statues in it. Mm. I don't know if there's a if there's a painting in it. Uh, I think it's above a tomb. I may be imagining this though. Oh no no okay here here, okay there's a tomb, but I think. I may or may not have. <laughs> exactly, Richie. That's exactly it. <laughs> you resized her perfectly. Look how cute she is. Oh, little Yoshka. And then, like, the chosen one has to, like, kneel down, like, oh, little Yoshka, you're so cute. <laughs> and then he puts her in his pocket. <laughs> no, and, and he, he, like, holds up an ear and she's, like, jumping up trying to grab it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I sent you a picture. Do you see the tomb above the tomb? Was there ever a painting or a frame of a painting, or did I make that up? That's probably like um, in the back. There's probably like there would have been an altar there, I guess. Mm. You find a um, you find a dark moon, like one of the seven years on the altar. So I guess the dark moons would come. This is like an old dark moon temple uh, church thing. Okay. Yeah, and like. It's weird because you you can go upstairs and there's like it looks like it's supposed to be a lift shaft, and it yeah. goes up to where Yoshi is, but it's deactivated. <laughs> so I'm guessing like yeah. We also find the painting guardian robes near Yoshi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Because hmm. uh, we all thought she was meant to be like, is she? Like a fragment of Priscilla, in the same way that there are fragments of Manus in Dark Souls too. But mm-hmm. is she the the well? No. Be, do do we want to talk about Philianor? Okay, let's talk about Philianor. Because in a lot of ways, Yoshka feels like Philianor version zero point five. Yeah, true. Because Philianor is also guarded by the painting guardians. The problem is we call them painting guardians as though, like, their goal, their their job literally is only to guard paintings. And we call them that because of where they are in Dark Souls 1. And it's like, that is the name they're given. But they're more just, like, um, people who serve the gods. Do they serve- Yeah, the- their role in Dark Souls 1 is to guard the painting. Are you- Because what if they were specifically hired as, like, museum security? Um, well, they're going a bit overboard. Because there's, like- <laughs> Dozens of them with with knives just <laughs> yeah. standing there. Yeah, they they take they take culture seriously in Anerland. Okay, it's just but no, it's just the one painting they take seriously. Every other painting is ignored. It's because they only have one good painting. <laughs> it's the only painting that's not concept art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, no, it's not. I think it is concept art as well. <laughs> Maybe it's like a limited edition one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like we we had um when we call them painting guardians, it's because what that's what they do in Dark Souls One. But I, I two I think just calls it the monastery set, and I think three calls it something similar. I think it's called the monastery set in that it's something like that. Hmm. Um hang on. Yeah, they just called church guardians in um in three. Do you think they got demoted or promoted? Well, 
the painted world of Ariam is, is the coolest thing they've guarded. Because <laughs> in in um in three they're just guarding Filianor. Yeah. Who I can I can take or leave Filianor. And in two, they're not even guarding anything, it's just a really rare drop from a red phantom you have to farm for ages to get. Do you think that's how you get hired to be museum security? Like you have to farm it in Dark Souls 2 and then you can wear it in Dark Souls 1 and 3 and apply for the job? Being like, I already have the uniform. All you need is to say yes. And then somebody hires you. Um, Maybe. Yeah, I think you have to be able to prove that you can respawn, though. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Also, I think, like, like acrobatic training. The balance on those beams is necessary. Oh my god! Is this a Dark Souls version of Cirque du Soleil? Hang on. The the church guardians in Dark Souls 3 just get summoned randomly every time someone goes into the church. So is it is it like the gig economy? The what? Like like you haven't like you join them by getting an app on your phone and then you just get this alert saying we need someone in the church now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it's a yeah, Dark Souls as a series is like a metaphor for the economy. <laughs> Cuz they start out in Anor Londa, they've all got like a steady job guarding the painting. They've yeah. been doing it for generations. Uh-huh. Then everything falls apart. And then by Dark Souls 3, they're just having like it's like Uber or something. Yeah. They're working like 10 jobs at once. <laughs> So where does Yoshka come into this? Because Yoshka is Gwyn's daughter, who we've never heard of before. <laughs> well, and she's she's well, she's in a church, mm-hmm. and in the church there's a dead church guardian, mm-hmm. and the church of Yoshka. Like it's it's confusing because she's in a church that's called Church of Yoshka, and then you find the Yoshka spear in a different church. But <laughs> Irithel's got too many churches. There's like a door, there's like a little um, alcove in that church that doesn't go anywhere. And I'm wondering if maybe that connected somewhere else that had the Yoshka spear in it originally. Because like I've I've been looking at um, Lance's work with Irithil. Yeah. And a lot of the architecture and buildings were just moved around kind of at random. Mm-hmm. So like I, I'm wondering if that area with all the, the little like, Irithil slaves and the... Um, the Yoshka spear was maybe that was in the same building at one point and they just moved it. But, um, so she, like Yoshka is Gwyn's daughter. She's in a church. There's a church guardian there and there's a spear and the spear says it's enchanted with sleeping spells. Right. Which is a, like, it's a weird specific thing to yeah. mention that this spear puts you to sleep. And then Filianor is also Gwyn's daughter. She's also in a church and she's also guarded by church guardians and there's also holy spears. The idea that if you want to protect Filinor, you're a spear of the church and you get these like spear ornaments. So it's almost like they had this idea for a daughter of Gwyn who was in the church with the spears and the church guardians. And then Yoshka wasn't quite finished the way they wanted it to. So Filinor is like, let's do it again. Similar to like the the way the Bloodborne DLC, like it, you just go back to bits different places in Yarnum, but, like, there's an extra room attached or something. Mm-hmm. Like, you go back to the Grand Cathedral, but now it has a basement and uh, an upper floor that you can't get to normally. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it may have been like that. Like, they... Yeah, Yoshka was... um May have been, like, an attempt at doing... Yoshka and Filianor may have been, like, two expressions of the same idea. Hmm. It's also interesting that, like, Filianor, there's a giant guarding her, and like, there's giants in Anor Londo that worked for the gods. So I don't know, like, if that whole chunk of it was maybe something they had planned for Anor Londo in DS3 and they couldn't follow through with. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So does Yorshka come from the painting? Who knows? Didn't Lance find some cut content about Yorshka? Well, this is the thing, because... He found it, but we don't know what it is, Can and you, we yeah. know very little about it. So this is why I was thinking we'd have more to say later on. But I guess we'll talk about it whenever it gets properly like explored. 
but Lance was poking around in the Cathedral of the Deep Starter. And in the, the cleansing chapel, which is like the main bonfire of the cathedral, it's what connects through those other two doors to the rest of it, you can make two Yorshkas appear in the pews of that church. And they're just standing there, and it's two identical Yorshkas, and they it's not called Yorshka. Yorshka's internal ID is just Saint. Like, the idea that she's like, like um, we recorded with Loki about this when he was talking about the way the series uses Saint. Yeah. So it would have just been like Yoshka is a holy, holy character from that church. And like, I don't know if, um, if there was meant to be two of her and they're identical twins or if like, it may have been that there was one Yoshka and she like moved from position to position and he just managed to turn them both on at once or something. I don't know, but mm-hmm. yeah, she looks like she, she had something to do with the cathedral of the deep early on mm-hmm. and we don't know what it was. And then if you look at her, um, like, that armor set that she wears is available. Like, it's it's in the game. You just can't access it, but you can mod it back in. And it specifies that, like, this used to be a white robe, but it's gone gray because she spent so long in the cell. And, of course, she's not in a cell in- the, But, like, that, it does still mention her as Yoshka Captain, and she, like, the, the crossbreed Yoshka. So- it lo- looks like she may have been in Irithyll Dungeon at one point, because I can't think, like, she would have been in the prison, maybe, like, like it, not not in a tower. She would have been in yeah. a prison somewhere, yeah. And her whole getup is somewhat reminiscent of um, the prison guardians or whatever they are. It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just uh, pulling up Yoshka's unused set for a second. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Prison guardians? Uh, they're just called jailers. Jailers, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it says Saint's Dress, and it says, um, a veil worn by the young crossbreed taken prisoner in the dungeon. Years of incarceration have stained it grey. So, the idea is, like, at some point, Yoshka would have been locked in a dungeon like for a really long time long enough for her dress to change from white to gray mm-hmm. yeah actually she doesn't call her your screw just says the young crossbreed richie <laughs> yes sinclair that was certainly an abrupt change in audio <laughs> can you tell us about the doll okay so one of the things lance found when he was data mining on orlando is that there is an unused NPC in the Dark Moon tomb where you marry Henri. And they don't have a model, it's just like an entity that is called Eclipse Princess. And if she's killed, she drops a doll that we think like that was the doll that you get from Aldridge's coffin now. Because in the original structure of the game, Aldrich would just have been in the Cathedral of the Deep. There was no Aldrich goes to an Orlando story. He would have uh, just been able to go to Irithyll without the doll. So mm-hmm. it looks like, yeah, the the doll that you get in the game, uh, the like the concept of there being a doll at all, like that would have been dropped by this Eclipse Princess character, who is in the Dark Moon tomb. And that's kind of all we know about her, just her name and that she has the doll. Was the Eclipse Princess Yorshka? Maybe. Although it's it doesn't fit with any of the prior Yorshkas because she's not in a cell and she's not in the cathedral. It may have been like an early version of Yuria because Yuria's like- mm, Right. Y- Yuria wants the eclipse to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. And this is interesting, because uh, Guinevere is called the Princess of Sunlight. Yeah. And we meet a Princess of the Eclipse. Yeah, so maybe she's, like, evil Guinevere. Yeah, I was thinking that. The goth version. Yeah. <laughs> um, And so it's very reminiscent of the quest we have in Dark Souls 1. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Did we have to use that doll to get to the painted world? I don't know, because th- there's no like evidence that the painted world existed. 
Oh. So it, it may have been, like, prior to the DLC, obviously. But it, it may have been, like, um... I think it's called Eclipse Doll. I'm actually going to check, because Lance told mm-hmm. me the exact name. It might be called Eclipse Doll. And if it's called that, then... Do you have any pictures of it? I think it just would have been the, the asset that we see in the game. Now. All right. Yeah, it's called, it's called the Eclipse Doll. So, like, I'm I'm wondering if, um, I don't know. You know what? I what? got this. Okay. Okay. So, for the eclipse to happen, they needed a doll. And this is a representation of the actual doll they needed. And the right. doll they needed was Priscilla stuffed in an effigy. Well, for all we know, that is what they wanted. I think so. Yeah, that doesn't really yeah. make any sense, does it? Because <laughs> I don't know. It's just, or maybe like you, the, like that that weird thing at the end of painting of Ariandel. Yeah, maybe you were supposed to show Ed the doll, and then something would happen. Or but do we? Ariandel's not in the that version of the game though. Like it was added later on. We don't know. Well, I think we would do have we? found it. I mean, it's okay. poss- It's possible. Like. The dreg heat is kind of in Dark Souls 3, and that was added later on. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, the crow people are in there, and they talk about the painted world. So yeah. maybe the painted world was in there. Like, wouldn't it make sense? Because it wasn't yeah. Dark Souls 1, and it was not a DLC. Because that would be outrageous. Yeah, imagine imagine being charged money just to play the painted world. <laughs> yeah. It'd be insulting. Especially if you'd already played the painted world for free in a previous game. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean they would never do that. No. No. <laughs> Especially since the old Hunters DLC, like the bar was set for DLCs, you know? Yeah, you, you can't go down. No. You gotta keep going up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, I feel like that doll is related to the stuffed Priscilla doll, we find. But do you, okay, do you think that's a stuffed Priscilla doll, or do you think that is, like, Priscilla's skin stuffed? Like a mummy? Okay, well, they took Priscilla and they stuffed her with something, or they stuffed her in something. Like, Priscilla is there, and the doll is Priscilla, and it's, like, creepy and stuff. Okay, but, like, bear with me, okay? Yeah. If that doll is kind of like a snake, right? Yeah. Snakes shed their skin. So maybe it's like uh, whoever the, that's just like the shedded skin of this person, this character, and this. Like maybe it's meant to be Yoshka or Priscilla. They left their skin behind and then they, like in the way that, that yeah. you find the locust heads and arms in the Ring City. What if this is the skin of the Eclipse Princess? Yeah. Well, she, she's not well, if that's the case. <laughs> Wait, what does the Eclipse Princess look like? We, I just, we don't know. I specifically oh. said we don't know. I don't remember. It's 6.30 a.m., bro. Yeah, okay. The other thing is that the... um, Hang on. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It, just, it does say Eclipse. There's also, interestingly... Um, this is stuff Lance has told me. The church guardian enemies, the painting guardian people, they're in Irithyll. In the alpha. Okay. Like, they're, they're hanging around, like, just wandering the streets, because it's, like, it's it's supposed to be Anna Londo, so they're still hanging around there. Um, he can't get them to come back, unfortunately. The model they use was removed, but, like, they're still called Church Guardian internally. So he can't get them to spawn, because there's something about the model that makes the game crash. Um... Are they wandering in Anor Lando because in the Alpha they're like door-to-door painting salesmen? Do you think it's like they team up? There's one group of door-to-door <laughs> painting salesmen and they sell you the painting. And then <laughs> the painting guardian shop, I'm like, hey, we see you got a painting. You might want to employ someone to guard the painting. Yes. And that's, that's why that Silver Knight is looking at the Guinevere painting because he's like, shit, I can't afford to get painting insurance for this painting. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's thinking. Anyone, anyone could steal these paintings anytime I've got to be wide awake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if only I could afford some guardians, I could go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about that that manner as like a bonus thing? Because I think we've okay. run out of Yoshi stuff. Okay. So, you know how we've talked about there being different paths to An Orlando originally? Mm-hmm. And one of them, like, basically for people who haven't been following, the way that you go from Irithyll through the sewer, and then there's a bonfire called Distant Manor, and then Distant Manor goes to Irithyll Dungeon. And there's like a, like a spiral staircase that just kind of ends after the dungeon. Originally, that would have been traversed backwards. That staircase would have gone all the way around down the side of that cliff, and it would have connected to the hole that you can see Irithyll from in Smoldering Lake. So you would have just gone out the top of Smoldering Lake and gone run up that hill and then reached Irithyll that way. And anyway, the the bonfire that connects to that area is called Distant Manor. And like it's it's an odd name because it's basically just in a completely featureless room. It's not much of a manor. It's just like a building with nothing in it. Yeah. So it looks like in Ye Olden Dark Souls 3 that the distant manor was the room with Gwindiv- with that Guinevere painting in it. Like that thing where you go through the sewer and then there is the like the kitchen area where you meet Sigvard and then there's this like two-story building with the paintings in it and like the Anor Londo stuff lying around. That would have been the distant manor. So that would have been where the distant manor bonfire is now. And you would have like gone up those stairs into this sewer area and then climbed up out of the sewer through the kitchen into that room with the the Guinevere painting and the Silver Knights. And then from there you could have gone to Sullivan. So what does that all mean? Well, it's just a, that's what distant, that's why that bonfire is called Distant Manor, even though it's more like Distant Hole. Distant, <laughs> distant Dark Souls 2 style featureless room. <laughs> mm. Mm. And yeah, the, um, there would have been a pathway up to Sullivan from the manor. So you, you kind of would have been able to skip all of Irithyll, just gone straight from, um, like directly, just like basically, just take a straight road to Sullivan from the manor. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Interesting. Not really. Well, la di da. Oh, I just got a comment on, <laughs> um, on. Remember. A while back, we did a Ring City thing. We did several Ring City things. Yeah. Well, the latest yeah. one that's yes. called The Ring City with JSF, Dark Souls yeah. lore. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I got a comment saying uh, it's like they had the last revision done by Tommy Whistle. <laughs> And that was made by Stray. Thanks very much, man. <laughs> Good comment. <laughs> I'm just trying to find um, the Dark Souls 3, like, dual language thing to see. If anything else uses this particular word, meaning eclipse. Because the with eclipse doll, like... Um, the I'm calling it eclipse doll because it's using the same word for eclipse that a bunch of other things like that reference the eclipse mechanic that was removed use. So like there's a boss called Wolf of the Eclipse that uses the same word for eclipse and everything, but you can kind of translate it different ways. So I just want to have a look to see if anything else uses this in the finished game. There's also a removed item in an Orlando in DS3 called the Dragon Egg. But we don't know what it did. Is it the egg that Philinor's holding? It might be. Like again, it's possible. It's called Dragon Egg. Um, it's called Dragon e- Dragon Egg, and then in brackets for testing. <laughs> so we don't know if like it was always meant to be the Dragon Egg or. Mm. 
but yeah, maybe maybe they did want like an egg that someone was holding, and then it would crack open, and that would because there's like references to different sort of Anor Londo things happening. So hmm. yeah, hmm. yeah. The the DLC does feel like removed ideas from. So, I don't know, that was almost 45 minutes of Yoshka. It's a cut out a bit in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, hang on, there's, there's another remove Yoshka item. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's called the... It's Gwendolyn's Finger. <laughs> Yoshka is obsessed with ears and fingers. Yeah. Uh, doesn't have a Don't graphic. you bring her Gwendolyn something to show that he's yeah, dead? Yeah, that was the cut mechanic. You would bring her Gwendolyn's finger. Oh, that was cut? I thought that was... How do you tell her that he's dead in-game? Uh, she never finds out. What? Oh. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure she doesn't find out. Hmm. Yeah, Ruined Finger of Dark Sun Gwendolyn. The young crossbreed girl loved her brother of all whom that remains is a ruined finger. Even so, her love for him will never falter. And if you give that to Yoshka, she does have dialogue if you somehow, like, put it back into the game. Uh, where is she? Like how Yoshka is so unpopular that if you look her up on the wiki, she's actually, like, the fourth result for her own name. <laughs> She's a brilliant company captain of the Dark Moon Knights, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she only ever says, like, um, uh, Sullivan Rongroy proclaimed himself pontiff and took me prisoner. Where could my dear brother be? So she never finds out that. And you was... never tell her? You're kind of a dick. Well, I th- I explained my, my uh, Sullivan and Baldrich Guinevere thing. With Aegon. I don't know if you want to do that again, because we might end up cutting it out, because it was quite long, that podcast. Maybe we can do it next time. Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe, oh, maybe since we reached this tier, there's going to be another Yorshka tier. You're just going to keep adding Yorshka tiers? Uh, yeah, because I didn't think it was, uh, but apparently uh, dreams do come true, so. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. You're going to have so many Yorshka podcasts. All right. <laughs> but like no, no one no one cares enough to get in arguments about Yorshka. <laughs> it's not like the doll where people get fucking furious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, hit- I think- oh no, I found yep. it. I found it. She says, "Okay, yeah, yeah. This is my brother's finger. How it has thinned and withered. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm certain you've given my brother peace. It's not much, but take this ring." And then she says, uh, "Take this ring and my thanks, not as captain, but as sister to the Dark Sun, Gwendolyn. You have granted me my brother's touch one last time." What does she do with all the ears? It's a very good question. Maybe we can have a podcast on that. Mm. What does yours can do with all the ears? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking over her dialogue to see what else is. That's just that. It looks like it was cut. Mm. Mm. But yeah, presumably you would have gotten um, that... Uh, the finger from beating Aldrich, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I I don't know what order a lot of this was recorded in, but like there the the recorded this is this like line of Yoshka's was recorded. And like the recorded dialogue does mention Aldrich leaving leaving uh the cathedral and slithering to Irithel. So, but like, I don't know what, what order it was in. So, I guess you would have gotten the finger from beating Aldrich, yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But, like, the, the thing I was getting at when we talked to Aegon was that, like, the Aldrich model, who, like, wasn't originally Aldrich, was a different character. I don't think that was ever supposed to be, like, literally someone consuming Gwendolyn. Yeah. I think it's just meant to be the person who took on Gwendolyn's role. And, yeah. like, it's it's someone who is dressed like Gwendolyn and has Gwendolyn's, like, ceremonial stuff on. But, like, the crown's different, the robe's different. It's close enough, but also it it's not the same guy. Like, if you put them side by side, like, the face is, is different, the crown's different, the robe is a different, like, the robe's a slightly different design and it's a different colour and, like, really it's just the, um... The Dark Moon bow, but like, I think just I think it's just meant to be the person who has Gwendolyn's job now, rather than Gwendolyn. Yeah, but didn't they yeah. also dream about a girl in hiding? Yeah. Oh god, that's the other thing. Do we want to talk about that shit? Yeah, let's talk about it quickly. Go. Okay. Uh, when you get Aldrich's soul, you get a small vor fic about how when Aldrich was eating Gwendolyn, he recognized in Gwendolyn the. Uh, Gwendolyn dreaming of a young pale girl who was in hiding. And you'd think, okay, that is, that's Yoshka. But the mm-hmm. miracle that they're talking about is called Life Hunt Scythe. And Life Hunt Scythe specifically is Priscilla's weapon in Dark Souls mm-hmm. 1, although it's a weapon, not a miracle. So it could be Yoshka, it could also be Priscilla. Mm-hmm. Which is why we were thinking maybe, yeah. You also notice like Aldrich when you're fighting him, he does the life hunt side. He like he makes his um, staff thing into a scythe. Yeah, and like yeah. <laughs> what does life hunt side even do? I'm gonna look it up. Life hunt stuff. Um, it's just a melee attack, isn't it? Uh. Oh yeah, you you um you get health back for using it. In Dark Souls One, Priscilla's scythe it built up bleed really really rapidly. Mm-hmm. And it built it up on you as you were using it. So if you, like, oh. hit someone enough times and they didn't bleed out, you would bleed out. Interesting. Yeah. And they talk about, like, it's not... It's one of those things that's mentioned and not developed very well, is that, like, Priscilla is said to have, like, it's just called the power of life hunt, and that's why they locked her away. But who knows? I guess life hunts just you get cut really badly. <laughs> Okay, I think that's it. That's enough Yoshka for today. It's almost an hour. For today? Are we going to have like a weekly Yoshka podcast? <laughs> if we reach that tier, yes. Okay. <laughs> what what tier will we find Yoshka's voice actor and get her to record stuff in character as Yoshka? I know the guy who was the voice of King Graham in King's Quest will record answering machine messages for you in character. Oh, yeah? Yeah. King's Quest Six ends with a really terrible song called "Girl in the Tower." Does that make <gasps> you think of Yoshka? Yoshka? Well, it yeah. might be. Yeah. Uh huh. Girl in the tower, I'm calling out. <laughs> Do you think you could serenade Yoshka with a giant boombox from that invisible bridge? Uh, what would she think a boombox was? Like, I get that she doesn't have much life experience, but presumably she has seen birds <laughs> fly past from her tower. She she doesn't have much life experience or common sense. Mm. She's like uh, that uh, that Phoebe character from Friends. Yeah. I don't know. I've never seen Friends. It's not worth it. (laughs) Okay, Richie, do the outro. Well, thanks to everyone who donated money 
to make us talk about Yoshka. At, um, <laughs> what time is it for you? Would it be like almost seven? I think. Yeah, it's almost yeah, seven. It's, it's like almost it's almost nine here. So uh, we had fun talking about Yoshka. Yeah. Our, our favorite character. Yeah. It was very early in the morning for Sin, so we whispered, <laughs> so it may function as ASMR. <laughs> We'll get Yoshka's VA to record some Yoshka ASMR. <laughs> ASMR Yoshka sorts through a bag of ears. <laughs> Hang on, Lance just sent me something. <gasps> Is it about Yoshka? He's going to redeem the podcast. Okay. Is it about Ludwig and Maria? Oh, actually, it almost is. It is the Cathedral of the Deep in the room where Yoshka <gasps> is, but there's no Yoshka. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Yosh- Yoshka. <laughs> in conclusion, Yoshka is a land of contrasts. <laughs> oh, this would be a good time to say that code words have evolved. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're only going to do code words for the uh, Gaming in the Yeltsin Years podcast. Right. Because it's, like, relevant, you know? Ow. It's like spies and code words. Okay. Soviet stuff. Okay. All right, thank you, Richie. Thank you, Sinclair, and thank you to everyone who donated. <laughs> Bye. Bye.